We've shown you how to unit test promises that are successful. We've shown you how to test promises that are not successful or error out with a little bit more work around predicates that reverse it. Promises are a little bit nicer in that they follow the pure function aspect of when you call a function, you always return a value. But unlike callbacks, you can see they're very verbose in that you get a function and then you have to create another function with a call and a function that doesn't handle the catch function, which then calls a function. So it gets very, very verbose to set it up and you kind of lose that simplicity that you have with normal functions from a callback perspective. How do we get that back? How do we make promises be a lot more A, terse, and B, go back to the whole mocha syntax of making assertions around those type of things rather than some kind of magic way that if you return a promise, you just know that it works, right? It's not very clear from the code that it's actually asserting some kind of behavior there. So we're gonna use a library to accomplish that called Chai is Promised. What it does is provide a couple of assertions around promises that allow you to do some nicer things in a more Mocha style. The only caveat is that once you import it, have to tell Chai to actually use it. Once you do that, you're good to go. So let's give you an example. We're gonna do describe down here that's only gonna do this as promised. When you test a promise should work, you would return it, but let's assert it. Let's return it like we normally would, but let's be a little bit more clear. We'll say should be fulfilled. So fulfilled is a normal Mocha assertion, but it has one special feature and then it returns a promise that itself. And it looks it to this particular promise to see if it does work. So it's almost the same behavior as returning a promise to Mocha, but it's very specific in that whatever this promise is, it verifies it works. So for example, if we do this, we run our test, you can see that it worked, but we can also expound upon this. So we can do a promise that all, and we could put, let's say three promises here that we're waiting on and they could, resolve in any order. So in the case of Node, where you're building an orchestration API, you're calling a bunch of different APIs, maybe a text file as well. So we're waiting for all three to resolve. We can still get a promise from that, which is what the promise that all returns and verify that that's successful. So even in the case of one internally rejecting, it causes the entire chain to fail and we can verify that the test fails. That's one nice thing that you can do using this simple fulfilled, it's a lot more clear what it's doing. And for failing promises, it works very similarly as well, where we can return a failing promise, but assert that it is in fact rejected. So when we return this one, we'll also get a successful unit test. And it's a lot easier than using the predicate wrapper. It's more clear what it's doing and it's following the Mocha syntax. Both of these work with the expect syntax if you'd like to use that syntax instead. There's one last thing that it does pretty well and that is asserting for values. The whole point of a promise is that you actually care about the values that these things pass. True, one, some kind of object, right, cow. These things are what we're really calling the promises for. Hey, web server, I know you're gonna take a while. When you're done, give me the data, right? That's what the promise is set up to do. Most of your assertions are not just on, did the promise actually work? More about, is the value the promise gave me back what I was expecting? We can assert in that as well. Do a normal one, one plus one should equal two. And this is a normal synchronous JavaScript call to say one plus one should equal two. You know, basic unit test, no promises here, but it illustrates how we expect a particular value to equal something. We'll do the exact same thing with a promise. One plus one should equal two, even if a promise delivers it. So we'll return the promise. Resolve one plus one should eventually equal two. This eventually is just like before, it returns a promise, but it still works with the existing Mocha assertions. So you can do eventually equals two, and it feels like a normal Mocha thing, and we rerun it, it asserts just like normal. If we were to change the value, you can verify that it does in fact fail, you can trust it. One caveat to all of these things is that you kind of get used to this feeling like synchronous code, but it's not. So for example, if we make this pass again, Okay, then we change it back to two, but we remove the return statement because we didn't return anything and didn't use a done, it actually thinks that this is a successful unit test. So even though we run and we get four passing, we can see the promise reported a failure. So if you see kind of this stuff and a lot of green, you should get really nervous. This is why TDD or 
just choosing to make sure that you've seen the test fail at least once are extremely important because as you get very comfortable and happy with this eventually rejected and fulfilled syntax, you just need to make sure you are returning promises if whatever you get is a promise. That's how you more easily test promises in a less verbose way using the library called chai as promise. Remember to support it tell try to use it. The ones that you really care about are fulfilled for successes, rejected for promises you know should fail, and using the eventually to prepend methods that you're going to make assertions on the actual data.